So you know about Ban Ban, right? The modern horror punching bag, the captain of bad mascot horror, a horror game so foul that it can't seem to get the taste of controversy out of its mouth. From Aya to the entirety of Brazil, this game has taken L's left and right, perpetually being made fun of for its poor models, redundant puzzles, and lack of, well, horror. But even with its lacking horror and convoluted gameplay, there's one aspect that nobody really cares to talk about, the lore. And for good reason. At least from what I've seen, a few YouTubers might read the QR codes and maybe laugh at the absurdity of the whole Givanium experiments plot line, before promptly forgetting everything they just read because none of it matters much to the game's actual story. However, I, unfortunately, decided to take a look at the Ban Ban lore to see how bad it was, and boy was I a fool. The wiki misspelled the word CONTACT, for God's sake, meaning I couldn't just skim the wiki, oh no, I had to watch hours of Ban Ban gameplay, and not only that, I went to the official Ban Ban server to ask real fans about these contradictions. You better like and subscribe, cause goddamn I'm about to show you why the Garten of Ban Ban lore is a contradictory hellhole. Okay, so I'm not really sure where I should be starting with this, so I won't be going in any particular order, meaning we'll be jumping around the timeline a little. Let's start with the Kebab Man. For those who haven't played it, bless your soul, the Kebab Man is a minor character appearing in Games 3 and onwards, being one of the few inanimate characters given a mural. They are a metal coat rack with wheels and two party hats, which mimic that of Ban Bans. The Kebab Man does not talk on their own, having a button on their back that repeats pre-recorded messages. With these messages being, well, pre-recorded, it's safe to assume that these messages were programmed in as, again, the Kebab Man is inanimate. However, therein lies the problem. Listen to the lines that Kebab Man can say. Behave or get banned, banned. Three stones with one bird. Hand over your pancreas. Bird up. The majority of these lines are in reference to things that Ban Ban told us. Things he told us that would only make sense in that moment. Although there's a handful of lines that seem to be things Ban Ban says on a more regular basis, like the pancreas line, or lines that weren't said to us, like behavior get Ban Ban, the rest aren't lines that Kebab Man should have programmed into him because they were only said a few hours ago in game. The most obvious of which being the three stones with one bird line. That line only made sense in the moment as Ban Ban hit us in the back of the head, in his words getting the perfect specimen can now use our key cards and doesn't have to risk getting anything from Nab Nab's room because we got everything important from there. Ban Ban would not have said this in any other context, and even if he did, would it really have been said enough times for it to be programmed into the Kebab Man? This argument can even be used with some of the other phrases in here too. Hand over your pancreas is odd in that, remember, this is a kindergarten. Most kindergartners don't even know what a pancreas is yet. Although Ban Ban references pancreases to an almost obsessive extent, why program in that line? Especially if you're trying to keep up the appearance that your kindergarten is safe, and that there's nothing weird going on. Also, if you want to break the fourth wall, it's also contradictory that the Kebab Man would say bird up, given that they blocked a uh, yeah from even breathing near the Garden of Ban Ban series. Granted, they unblocked him recently, but even so, pick a side, you fork bros. Now, let's talk about the Abyss. In the start of the second game, we find a note that informs us of how they thought everything that was thrown in the Abyss died. Due to the note saying the things they've done finally come back to bite us, it's almost certainly from a worker. Workers whom worked with these monstrosities. The note mentions how they were tricked and that they've been seeing faces in the abyss, but upper management seems unaware of this fact as well. I say this because in another note, we know that the higher-ups apparently would throw workers in the pit too with the intention of silencing them. But the part that's important isn't Zulfius, you know, the face in the abyss, but rather the fact that to everyone's knowledge during the time of the experiments, the abyss came kills them. That being said, there are several experiments that are stated to be permanently not ready for presentation. So, given the company doesn't seem to have any qualms about killing their own workers, why not kill the extra experiments once they are deemed permanently not ready for presentation? Especially given that they'd be taking up time and resources, of which we know the company was low on during further notes. Sure, you could argue that cases like Nab Nab were too aggressive to be controlled or brought anywhere, but Sheriff Toadster and especially Queen Bouncelina have been brought to other places in their their case reports, and the queen is especially non-violent, so why keep them? It doesn't make any sense. Speaking of experiments being deemed permanently not ready, let's talk about the double standard between the Syringian and Nab Nab. Syringian is stated to be permanently not ready for presentation because the mechanical arms may prove to be frightening and hazardous to children. Despite this though, Nab Nab, who is stated to have an active death toll in the double digits, is only marked as not being ready for presentation and not permanently not ready for presentation. Quite the double standard that one be 
shelled for having disturbing metal arms, while Nab Nab, who has actually murdered several adults, is someone who they are still fighting to make presentable. Here's another neat question for you. Why do characters get murals even when they are permanently not ready for presentation? Here's an even better question. Why do characters like Zulfius or Kitty Saurus get murals? Both shouldn't, because they're not intended to be shown ever. Why make art take the time and effort and money to put them on the walls of your building if they aren't something you ever plan to present, like Queen Bouncelina, who again is deemed permanently not ready, or again, Zulfius, Kitty Saurus, the surgeon, Sir Dadadu. These don't really look like the most presentable either now, do they? No, really, tell me why these characters have murals. Hell, give me a reason they have murals this far down into the facility. They don't say anything important. They just say cheesy one-liners that don't make sense. Who are these for? Because they aren't for the children, they aren't for the workers, and they aren't for upper management. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My point being, why are there murals of characters who are permanently not ready or are self-described as being too scary for children? Because these murals clearly aren't for the adults either. Now, when you read these case numbers, it's safe to assume that these are in order of creation. As case one is for the substance of Anium as a whole, then there are a few more cases until case fourth surgeon, case five, then case six Ban Ban, and then case seven Bambolina. Now, I'm gonna show you these two papers, and I wanna see if you can spot it. I'll give you five seconds to pause the video. In the corner of each of these papers is the Ban Ban Kindergarten logo. Now let's go to case one and look at that logo, all right? This logo has each letter represent one of the experiments by color. In particular, it adds some of their character traits to each letter. A has Bambolina's bow, N has Ban Ban's party hats, and the other A has Nab Nab's fangs. Do you see where I'm going with this? How did they know before making them what color they would be? And how did they know that Bambolina would have a pink bow, that Ban Ban would have two party hats, and that Nab Nab would have fangs? How did they know that these characteristics would be each of their most defining physical character traits? And how did they know what color they would be before they were even made? And before you comment that Bambolina was given their bow and Ban Ban was given their party hats, let me ask you this. Why? Why would they do that? Especially given that there's precedent to the complete opposite. We know that Queen Bouncelina grew their scepter as it specifically stated in one of the logs that wasn't given to them. And even if they were given those items to match the logo for some unexplained reason, that still doesn't explain Nab Nab. His fangs are, well, fangs. You don't stick them in there. Not to mention, why show that on your kindergarten logo when fangs are associated with the scary? Things like vampires or spiders that kindergartners are kind of scared of. How the hell did they know what their experience were gonna look like and then put those traits in the logo when said characters didn't even exist by the time they started using it? From the kebab man to the logo, there's a lot of weird plot holes and contradictions here, but of course I'm no expert in Ban Ban lore. So who better to ask than the official discord of fans? The following is my actual recorded reaction messaging real members of the discord. Enjoy. Hello, is me, um, C Cafe from the past, I guess. So, like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to be going to, like, I'm in the official Garden of Ban Ban server right now. This is the official server. I mean, I've, I've talked a little bit here. My actual username is not Cook Cafe. Uh, I'm going to be censoring what my actual username is, but I nicknamed myself for the sake of this. The current plan, um, there's a game theories tab of their server, and what I'm going to be doing is I have this little side dog here, in which I have some of the main points that I talk about in the video that you guys just heard. But yes, so we are going to be beginning with the first point, which we're going to first talk about the um, murals and how there's ones for even people that are marked permanently not ready for presentation. We're going to see like how people respond. Some of these points might not actually be used depending on like how this all goes, but yeah, um, let's uh, begin. I preemptively prepared what I'm going to be asking. If they are characters they don't ever plan on presenting, why take the art and time to paint them onto the walls? See Queen Bouncelina and Toadster for prime examples. Let's uh, see how this goes. I'm very nervous. And of course, I'm trying to be like very nice so they don't have a reason to ban me. Because we all know how ban happy this server is. Alright, just post it to the game theories section. There's- they have no- nobody's typing. The server has 30,000 people in it. Nobody's active? 
I'm starting to wonder if nobody's gonna actually respond. That'd be very awkward. <laughs> so much more dead than the Poppy Playtime server. Which, yeah, I'm also part of that. That one gets like things every second or so. Okay, uh, we're back. It's been a while, but I just got ping. Uh, I'd say they are still mascots, even if their real forms will never be shown to the public. They're still characters of the kindergarten and can be marketed. Which I guess is like a fairish point, maybe? Yeah, I just wanted to pop in and say that this comment actually led to my counter argument you heard earlier. The one where I brought up characters like Zolfius or Sir Dadadu, who definitely aren't mascots. And also would not make sense to have in murals. So yeah, this is why you should fact check by asking the actual fans, as I can confidently say they helped make this video become a lot better. Alright, back again, there are more messages. So we had the marketed thing. New person has come in and said, I'm pretty sure it's just a plot hole. Ban Ban 2 murals are explained as the employees liked the rejected monsters, so they let them keep them in spirit on the walls. Other than that, I think they're just plot holes, i.e. they only need Nabnalina to suit Nab Nab and didn't even finish her yet, gave her wall art. So yeah, people are agreeing with me. Um, here's another thing. Sorry, the Syringian was deemed permanently not ready for having mechanical arms that may be frightening when Nab Nab, who had an active death total in the double digits, was just marked as not ready and not permanently not ready like the surgeon. Let alone killed. So we'll see if anybody responds to that, but in the meantime, I'm gonna keep working on scripting the other video. Alright, um, we got some more notifications, we're gonna look at them. Alright, here we go. Didn't they get rid of Nab Nab anyway? Here, I can double check to make sure I'm not wrong here. It was... I'm not sure, but according to the case logs up until update 5. However, they want to recontain him. Unlike with the Syringian. Let's double check. There we go. I'm out here schooling Ban Ban Lore Finder. Is that Canada? Ban Ban has a gun. That's the lore. What? Wait, does Ban Ban actually have a gun? Am I, am I being dumb? Is this real? Not seeing any guns. The fact that I had to actually genuinely check should show you the extent of the Ban Ban lore. Or maybe there's like an emote they're referencing. What is that? What is that? What the f- What are these? What are these? Why? Okay, so here's your little update. So I know I said two of the points and I didn't really get too much back. Somebody just said that they Bam Bam is a gun in the lore. Uh, Bam Bam lore finder didn't ever actually respond to their other thing that they were gonna say. And we actually got one of the actual Euphoric Brothers responded. Not to my thing though, but Gepo appeared. They responded to a meme up here, I think it's about crab dance. And then they responded, the similarities are too similar, but they didn't actually say anything. It's nine right now, so I guess maybe I'll ask my next thing. And another whole thing. Then why not throw away the experiments who are permanently not ready for presentation at the pit, especially given it was taking away time and resources, which we know the company was low on from other notes. All right, we have posted. I'm gonna go put my chicken away. I guess we're back to waiting again. All right, so I just woke up like a little bit ago. I probably hear my voice. So in response to my thing about them wanting to kill their own workers, um, the band band Warfinder said the note was playing reference to the monsters and not people, but here, I'm going to try and pull up, because if it was them throwing the monsters into the pits, then why are there any living ones? Or I guess it's like that they don't actually die, but like, you know what I mean. Alright, I'm tired, and I don't think I'll be asking anything more because it's starting to become very clear that I know more than the Ban Ban fans do, and that concerns me. Here. Alright, we'll see if they respond. This will probably be the last thing I'll ask them though, because it seems like most of the time, they'll just not respond to it. Bar Bam Bam has a gun, that's in the lore. It's not saying that um, it's bad to respond to the joke or anything like that, but it's like, come on! I know more lore than Bam Bam Lore Finder? It's in your name! Come on! 
so that was disappointing. I was only going to talk about three of my five points. Despite there being 30k people in the server, barely anyone talked. I did get one of the euphoric bros to appear, but not in response to anything we were talking about. And the biggest counter argument I got, again by someone whose name was literally Ban Ban Lore Finder, was instantly disprovable by the exact same note I was talking about. So somehow, by some twisted monkey paws wish, I know more about the Ban Ban lore than genuine non-ironic fans of the game. It's a shame that the euphoric bro that did appear didn't answer my question either, but sometimes it's just how life is, yeah? Anyways, I now have to live with all this knowledge forever knowing way more than any sane human should know. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to help me recuperate some of my lost brain cells. This was Spice from Cut Cafe, and I'll see you later. Peace!